You want a rant from the beast? You're gonna get a rant from the beast. Alright, it's been a while, hasn't it? Geometry Dash has the reputation of being a really addicting game. The game doesn't really have a reason to be addicting, at least in the full version, since at that point there's nothing else to buy. There's no microtransactions or another game. But it's managed to draw in millions of people that are long-term fans of the game, such as myself. No mom, I'm not addicted, I just like spending 9 hours a day jumping over spikes. I'm kidding, of course. That's an exaggeration. It's actually 8. But the weirdest thing about this game, and more specifically, the community for the game, is people don't really leave. Since not too many big players have ever up and stopped playing completely, I thought it would be interesting if I looked at some of the people that actually have in another thrilling edition of GD History. C1997, or now just C, was one of the most notorious Geometry Dash commentators. He had himself involved in a lot of controversies, where usually, he was the guy people sided with. This was mainly because he was intelligent and charismatic, and he never really used Geometry Dash as a crutch to get views. He started the GD diss track period, with his diss track on Cyrillic, and changed up a lot of things in the community in general. Most people probably know him for his series G News, which was the first good and popular Geometry Dash news show. G News would go on to inspire other people in the community, to make Geometry Dash related news after C stopped making them. Some notable ones were Community Report, Hughes News, and Z News, one of which was good. Outside of news, the effects of C style are obvious in pretty much any Geometry Dash commentary or review channel. GD Floroni, Werwin, Draconia Army, and myself are all examples of his influence on creators. Some people are even accused of being clones of him, but this is usually because of their dry content that doesn't really bring too much to the table. They're seen as C1997 clones only because C was the most popular Geometry Dash commentator. Not because of their similarities in their style, but mostly just because of the video topics. Nowadays, C makes a lot of space-related videos about mysteries in the solar system, and I'd say his videos are definitely higher quality now. They're definitely more factually correct. I'll always miss seeing his wacky antics with the GD community, as he was one of the most interesting Geometry Dash channels on YouTube. He still interacts with some people on Twitter and is pretty well aware of community events, but he's made it pretty clear that he's sticking to other content right now, and doesn't really plan to come back. Hotball1 was one of the best Geometry Dash players with accomplishments like Bloodbath on 60Hz and other levels like Bloodlust on 144. He was basically just your ordinary top player, but left because he saw more potential in his career in Fortnite creative mode. The reason you're not seeing any Geometry Dash gameplay right now is because Hotball has deleted all of his level completions, and instead opting to go for the pure Fortnite channel look. A move that definitely makes my job a lot harder. Now, veterans of the channel will know that my first video was actually on Fortnite, so I'm basically an expert on this. Hotball would speedrun obstacle courses called death runs, which require precise timing and hand-eye coordination, as well as putting a lot of stress on the player towards the end. Oh, wait a minute. I'd like to think that he probably got those skills from Geometry Dash, but maybe that's just wishful thinking. He won the Fortnite player Scissors' first ever death run and got a shoutout from him, which boosted his channel into popularity. After this, he would silently drop Geometry Dash in order to pursue what he was doing in Fortnite. Most of us would have done the same thing, I'm sure, and it seemed like he was having fun with doing this. He did keep using songs from Geometry Dash in his streams though, which was nice. Just a little bit of dog whistling, I guess. 
He uploads little Fortnite compilations nowadays that don't get too many views compared to his subscriber count, but he seems like he's having fun with them, so. Hopball might come back one day. It's kind of inconclusive for me, but he hasn't really shown any signs that he will. Etzer was a big effect creator back in 1.9 and early 2.0. His style would go on to inspire most of the effect creators of that era, and his influence still rings through creators to this day, including me. He was also one of the first people to make actually good Geometry Dash related videos on YouTube. Some of these are absolute classics that pretty much everyone should watch, but Etzer's past was worse than people originally thought. He had been scamming people in Team Fortress 2, and had made a lot of money in TF2 skins. People like Viperin apparently knew about this, but this wasn't made public until The One made a video exposing it to the community. People were surprised by this, but they were accepting of the video because of how well it was put together, and its evidence being pretty undeniable. If Etzer would want to win back the respect of the community, he would have to apologize, and work towards giving the money or skins back to the victims. But, unfortunately, to this day, he hasn't uploaded a GD-related video or anything to resolve the situation at all. It doesn't look like he's coming back anytime soon since most people probably wouldn't support him until he makes an effort to pay back his victims. Etzer is the only person that's been chased out of the Geometry Dash community if you think about it, and this is really the only canceling that's ever happened. So it's one of the most interesting ways somebody's left, in my opinion. Here's a quicker one. Mafiwi was a really good player, mainly with the wave. And he's really only known when people are referencing Sonic Wave. He's the guy that's responsible for this. No! Oh 98! 98! <laughs> <laughs> He also made Sonic Wave Rebirth with Funny Game. This level is famously dedicated to his deceased grandfather, which would make his next move all the more surprising. Basically, he just sold his account for $100. Some people called him out for being immature or desperate for cash, but I personally respect the hustle. Triaxis was one of the best effect creators in 2.0. She took a lot of inspiration from Etzer and Funny Game, but she was arguably more influential than both of those. Some of her levels pushed the boundaries of what was possible in the level editor, and she inspired a new generation of effect creators. At some point in 2016, she revealed that she was transgender and wanted to be referred to as a girl. This all seemed to be going well, and most people were fine with this, but Triaxis was getting a lot of harsh and personal criticism from GD Water. He said that Triaxis was just looking for attention, which is a common talking point among people who want to delegitimize trans people, and even in a newer video, refuses to use Triaxis's preferred pronouns. GD Water was one of those clickbait channels back in the early days of the community, and he kind of stood out from the rest by providing some commentary. The commentary wasn't insightful or interesting like some current GD channels, but all that really mattered was that it was there, because back then there wasn't that much of his type of content. GD Water was basically just in the right place at the right time, so he gained some popularity. So a lot of people took Water more seriously than they should have in my opinion, including Triaxis. She would take a lot of the criticism really personally. At this time, Triaxis was one of the most well-known creators in the game, so why would she want attention? by coming out as transgender. That's just weird logic. Triaxis is a whole story, honestly. I could probably make a whole video on it because of how much I dislike GD Water. Triaxis made more art-based content for a while and then deleted her channel entirely. Exotic is perhaps the most interesting out of all of these, which is why I saved him for the last spot. Exotic was a Korean player that was around pretty much since the beginning, and was on top of the leaderboards in the early stages of the game. As you've probably noticed, he doesn't have any proof to back up his achievements, which is why I've recorded some gameplay for this part. For this reason, most people nowadays would probably say he was a cheater, and had fake stars. 
but this was a time before the mute troll video, and before people really thought about cheating in Geometry Dash. At the beginning of 2017, Exotic left the community in 2.0, and the way he did it shocked people and made the community worried for him. He posted on his Twitter account that he had one more day left to live, and that a virus was on his body. At the time, there was a virus running through South Korea, so people tended to believe him, even if he may have hacked his achievements. Exotic had a thousand or so followers on his Twitter account, and this news quickly spread around the community. People were in general really respectful towards Exotic, and there wasn't too much public outcry of the theory that he was lying. Around the beginning of 2017, somebody attempted to come back as Exotic, but was likely a faker. He only had this screenshot of his account. These kind of screenshots are really easy to replicate. The in-game names in Geometry Dash are really easy to fake and make up. This whole situation is better documented by C1997 in his video about the exotic situation. I think it's interesting, so if the exotic situation interests you, I'd check it out. I'd say this is really unethical, considering exotic might actually be dead, and the guy who did it is clearly just wanting some quick attention. Luckily, not too many people believed him, besides a few moderately big YouTube channels, and Exotic's legacy wasn't affected much by it. Exotic's account has recently been hacked by someone trying to promote their Instagram. You can tell it's not him because the message is in Spanish, not Korean. He hasn't made a return on Twitter, and he hasn't started a YouTube channel. So it's safe to assume that this isn't actually him. Nowadays, it's just accepted that old YouTubers Geometry Dash accounts will get hacked, it happened to see 1997, and the people will come back to try to impersonate them. But I think it's a lot different in this case, because Exotic might literally be dead. It's just really disrespectful in my opinion. So that's the most interesting big players I could think of that have left the Geometry Dash community. Of course there are more people that have left GD, but the other stories I feel are not as exciting. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody I talked about here came back one day, as Geometry Dash is a game that gets you and keeps you in the community for a long time. There will be more people that leave the Geometry Dash community, but they'll always be filled in by new up and comers. We might have lost C1997, but now we have Woolsey. Some big players may have left, and they don't have the novelty of being around since the beginning, but we have new players like Technical and Nepesta. Geometry Dash isn't going anywhere anytime soon, because of how well it keeps the players in the game. If you ever choose to quit Geometry Dash, just keep in mind that you'll probably come back one day. I was going to have a really long outro telling you all about what I've been doing, but I decided to keep it short and not script it. I have two major announcements. I'm pretty much done with making Geometry Dash levels, at least for the time being. I just don't get any joy out of it anymore, really, and I'm more interested in making YouTube videos now. I will eventually come back, I'm sure, because, you know, I, <laughs> I've spent way too much time on it to just give it up all in one time, but... Yeah, for now, there probably won't be any new levels for a while. And the other thing is, I'm going to start working on bigger projects. So videos, maybe over the 20 minute mark, which I know is kind of crazy now, but you know. Uh, I have fun with big projects like the Race to Be Bloodbath, and you know, I'm getting rewarded with a lot of views on that video, which is pretty cool. I think that's the most viewed video on my channel now. But yeah, bigger projects are more fun for me, and I know they're not as profitable, but you know. <laughs> You guys think I'm making money off this? Come on. I actually did just get the opportunity to get monetized, so I probably will be monetized in the next few weeks, uh, next two weeks probably. We'll see. But yeah, see you. What does she think about you having sex with guys? We're both bisexual, so neither of us oh, can. She has sex with women? Sometimes, yep. What a mess! 
fun time, Jesse.